Great. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so today we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about fungi, okay? Fungi or fungi. Before we get there, I just want to point out that on Tuesday's entry of the unit planner, I have started putting some review questions from the textbook for your upcoming uh, semi-unit tests. Uh, I have, these questions are predominantly things that are in chapter two. So, um, the prokaryotes, the virus, as well as the protists. Okay. Um, I'm going to put up more, uh, later today or tomorrow for chapter three. So you should be doing some review questions too. Okay. Uh, the slides about fungi. So let's get there. Uh, fungi is a very interesting, uh, organism. Okay. <laughs> Well, one of them is my brother-in-law, so I really hope he knows what he's doing. Although he spent a lot of time out in the woods. So, anyways, coming back. Uh, so there is an episode. I'll look for it later on. But plants, okay. Now, fungi. We used to actually think of them as the same kingdom as plants. Okay, we used to only have the animal kingdom. We only have the plant kingdom. That's the original. Okay, we later on realized fungi are a little different. Now, a couple of things. Why uh, fungi are similar to plants. So, waiting, waiting, waiting. So, a couple of things. They are multicellular eukaryotes. This word here means staying in one place. It does not move, really. I mean, it moves when it grows, but it doesn't like move around like an animal. Okay, that's probably the reason why people think, oh, it's just animal kingdom and plant kingdom. Yes. It says motion. Wait, what is a uh, one place? Um, that would be... I would say like you was. Uh, I would say, for example, when they are like. Venus flytrap, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Not Venus flytrap, it's not really. There was one earlier that was showing that seems like opening up, and that's supposed to be uh, one that would eat other insects too. Okay. Uh, so they also grow in the ground like plants. However, so make sure you know what that word is, okay? However, things are different from plants. They cannot make their own food. They are not photosynthetic. They are not photosynthetic. Also, anyone remember what is the material of fungi cell wall? Yes. Say again. Chitin, chitin, okay. Depends on really where, how you pronounce it. But yeah, C-H-I-T-I-N, yes. And the method of reproduction, okay? The method of reproduction is also different from plants. Now, just like in the video, fungi or fungi and... Hmm. Oh, why is it off all of a sudden? Did the battery died? Hmm. Battery. Oh, yeah, it's 10%. Anyways. So the fungi and animals are actually much closer related than uh, with plants. If you look here, fungi is here, animals here, plant is here. So let me zoom in a little bit better. So if you look, fungi and animal, we had a much closer common ancestor here than with plants. Okay, If you look, want to find out plants... Last time we had a common ancestor with those guys would be all the way back here. Okay, so according to evolutionary history, we're much closer related to fungi than with plants. Okay. Now, some characteristics. Some characteristics. Uh, this is... What does the word external digestion mean? What does the term external digestion mean? Anyone? Yes. I'm guessing that digested outside of the body. What does it mean by digested outside of the body? Like it, uh, it uses 
Not quite, but okay. Yes. So when you say digest, what does that mean? Okay, good. So they do break down because they mostly eat dead things. So they would break down the leaves, dead leaves or the dead plant matter or dead animals outside their body using digestive enzymes. So they will release their digestive enzyme onto the thing that they're going to feed on. And then after the digestive enzyme break down their food, they will absorb it in. Okay. Contrast to us humans, humans are internal digest. Uh, we have an internal digestive system. We eat our food in, the food goes inside our body, internally broken down in our stomach by the enzyme and stomach acid, and then absorb. So external digestion would almost be like, if you think about it, us vomit out our stomach acid and digestive juice onto our food, wait till it does its thing, and then slurp it back up. Okay? To us, that's really weird because we don't do that. But that's what external digestion is. And chances are by now you will never forget what external digestion means. Yes. Is there a benefit of having external digestion? Considering the fact that, um, this is my educated guess, considering the fact that uh, if whatever that you're eating can get you sick, having it broken down outside your system and then you just absorb the nutrient maybe is safer. So you can like leave aside anything that's like poisonous. Maybe it will broken down by whatever enzyme you die, you're giving off. I don't know. That's my educated guess. So you okay. Need a stomach either if you use external digestion. That is true. Okay. Yes. Is there like um, like limited to the space that they're at? How do they like? Do they ever like run out of a food source? Um. We'll get to that. Other questions? Yes. Absorb the nutrients all back. Okay. Yes. No, it's not. Remember, they're multicellular, so they're just releasing whatever enzyme. It's almost like. Start tomorrow. Just a reminder to all randomly in the Meet me, Madam Lane, at 8:30 a.m. in the auditorium to set up for a coffee sandwich. All right. That's it. So just like us, we have digestive juice and enzyme, but they're not part of our cell. When we release it, it releases into the organ which there's a space in the middle which contains those things, okay? Um, now, this part here, which answer partly answer your question. The part that you can see, usually, it's usually just the reproductive structure, okay? The main part of the body is usually below ground or below whatever it is, okay? Just like in this diagram here, the mushroom, for example, that is only the reproductive structure. This is the structure they will release their spores. Kind of like seed, but not quite. But then the rest of their uh, body, uh, mycelium, it's underground. It's actually spread out quite far distance. Okay. So that being said, let me ask you a question. Mole is a type of fungi. So let's just say if I, in my cupboard, I found a loaf of bread, which 
loaf of bread, which I found, you know what? Oh, yo. Oh. A corner of it or an edge of it is moldy. Should I say, I'll just cut off this part and eat the rest? Why not use your current understanding? Yes. Because his body is on like when he disturbed it, but it probably ex has extended his body into like deeper into the bread. Exactly. So there might be the other part of the bread might have some of the myoceum that you don't cut off. Okay. Just don't risk it. Okay. Someone asked from the other class, can't we just eat more? Like, you know, like we eat mushroom, right? It's like, but the thing is that we don't eat every single kind of mushroom. So not every single type of mole would be good for you. Yes. How do some, uh, why do some mushrooms are poisonous to us and why they don't? Because they produce different types of chemicals inside, uh, inside, their, sub, inside their body that our body cannot break down. Just like, for example, chocolate is poisonous to dogs. Because their body cannot break down certain a certain type of chemical in in chocolate, we can. Okay, so please don't feed your dog chocolate chip cookie unless you really don't like that dog. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Now, um. There are five major phyla. We only focus on these three. This one here, which contain mostly the mushrooms. This one here contains mostly the moles. This one here contains mostly including yeast. How many of you, anyone in this group, uh, have chosen uh, Baker's yeast for their micro research? Because if you did, you will come across this one as part of the micro yeast. Any of you did pick the one that is that is to mix soya sauce. The, you, did you come across this taxonomic level? Yeah, because soy sauce, we actually use a type of mold to make that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. We have to know all five of the phyla. Focus on these three. Okay, so here are some information about how these phyla are, five phylas. Don't worry so much about it. Okay, just have some brief understanding. Life cycle, life cycle. Now, some of them are complicated stages of sexual and asexual reproduction. Um, alternation of generations. Now, alternation of generations we came across this back when we're talking about protists, but I don't really feel we did it justice, okay? So, so alternation of generation basically mean this. In one generation, you have, you have a diploid organism. You have a diploid organism. If you remember, diploid means it contains all the DNA. It contains all the cro uh, chromosomes, okay, that you have had. Now, this individual will create, through the process of meiosis, haploid organisms. So these living things, like in mammals and humans, we just make sperm and eggs. But these guys, they'll actually make a living. Hello, if you're in the building, can you please call guidance? Hello? Yeah. But these guys, they'll actually make a living organism that contains only half of the genetic information. And these will, these will be male or female, but only contains half the chromosomes. And then later on, that will be a second generation. And then later on, some of these will come together and form a new diploid organism. Okay? So, in here, so alternation of generation is that for 
every other generation, you will have a diploid and haploid organism. Okay. Yes. Diploid and haploid, basically each organism supposed to have like a, a, number, a number of chromosomes. Humans, you have 23 pairs, 46, okay? So in this case, if for mushroom, for certain pro, uh, protists, what they'll do is, let's just say, let's use number 23 pairs. It's not. For one generation, they all have 23 chromosomes. For one generation, next generation, they'll create individuals that only contain half. Okay? And these individuals will later on become either male or female, and then they will create, coming together and create a diploid organism. Okay? So we're talking about like organisms as a whole. So like, say one type of fungi could have like, 23, and then another, like, the descendant of that one guy would have to Yes, but they're not, it's a descent, direct descendant, but it's not, like, contain all the organisms, uh, all the chromosomes. They can't, for this one, you can't go and separate more into, like, less and less. Would it, would it have, like, half and then half of another? Or would it just have, like, half of 23? Basically, as I said, in humans, it will be like we just make sperm and eggs. But for these guys, they actually make a living individual. Okay. They will morphologically be different. Morphologically, structurally, they will be different. But in some ways, it more it's kind of like their life cycle. Okay. Yes. How do we know that we didn't start like generation two and then go to three and then go to like uh, probably because we observe more than one generation and yeah, we do DNA. Like, you know, it, it's like the human brain. Yeah. It's like, wait, uh, now, one thing here is this. Um, oh, one thing here I have for the protest lesson. Hi, guys. Can you look up here? Excuse me. For the protest lesson that is on last Thursday, I've added a link here that talks about the plasmodium life cycle. This video explained quite well this alternation of generation, okay, and within the life cycle for a plasmodium. So I would ask you for like a much more clear picture, look at that. This video will also supplement and explain for example, the part on this slide here that talks about that talks about the life cycle. We did talk about where each there's three main stages, but we didn't really talk about the alternation of uh, generation that well last Thursday when we we're explaining. So, watch this video. Okay. Any questions? Yes. This lesson, I'm recording it right now. Okay? Good, good? Okay. Now, I know you guys have a lot of things to do. So when you're in class, like these videos is more like if you're absent. If you're in class, watch, like do pay attention.